Hey everybody, Sprocket here. So, we are at my parents' house. And even with the sun on my back, you can see, it's really bright out here. So this is my 62 Corvair. Give you a better look at it. So, this whole front is all pushed in. Just kind of yank it out with a chain. <laughs> did some straightening in here but I got a lot more work to do with it this obviously is not well maybe it's not obvious but this is not the hood that belongs on the car it's in fact it's just a skin which I'll show you see just the skin this is sheet metal for the floors that need to be repaired which I'll show you in a minute I'm apologize for the background noise I'm right next to a busy road so as you can see I got my work cut out for me as far as rust repair, but it's a unibody, so that's why. This is the side, like I said, that took the most damage. Most of that was back there. I pulled that all out. Fender's still kinked, so I'm in the process of taking that fender off so I can straighten it better. Plus, I don't know how well you can see it right there. See the rust line? That frame rail <clears throat> excuse me is kinked a little bit which is causing binding in the steering but um, yeah so all of this over here I've straightened out some sorry it's so hard to see it but um, like I said I was in the process you can see right here was drilling out spot welds and I kind of hit a stopping point because I have to get under here to get the rest of them but um, yeah it's been sitting here for a while you can see here's the hood otherwise known as the engine cover and yes this is the back of the car for those of you out there that have never seen a Corvair the engine goes right here this is one of your drive axles the other one is in shadow so you, oh, there it is yep and you can see it so obviously the battery tray is pretty much gone so a lot of sheet metal work to do on this car this hinge, you can't really see it, but up underneath there, this is all rotten, so this doesn't really have anything to attach to back there. It's just being held up by the prop rod and the other hinge. Whoop, that one. This is where the spare tire goes. Uh, that's my throttle, throttle rod. I don't remember if that came with the car or if I got that with something up at the junkyard. I don't know. I've been collecting pieces for this car for a while. So, the, um, there's my VIN, or sorry, no, that's the body tag, my bad, that's the body tag. So, exterior-wise, we got this area right here that's pretty bad, I gotta fix that. It's all bubbly all down through here, so I'm about to pull this rear bumper off and clean that up. So you can see the other side here, shiny stuff. And the sun is not helpful today. You see rot in the dog legs. So this car was uh, restored once before and not the right way. They just bondoed and uh, it's a mess I started tearing apart the other side there's supposed to be drain holes on both sides of these that comes down from up in here so you know when it rains it lets the water out well on that side and probably this side too they just plug them off which is not wise uh, this is the 700 model which is like the mid-range yeah, the mid-range, because you had a 500, 600, I'm sorry, 500, 700, and 900, if I remember right. This is the mid-range, that's why it's got extra trim down the sides and across the front and around the windows. 
So the 900, I think, would have had more trim. I want to say right here. I know some of the older cars had a piece of trim right here. This one, unfortunately for me, or fortunately, depending on how we look at it, did not. So, interior-wise, this car did not have a front seat when I got it. Uh, you can see some of the parts I've been collecting. That steering wheel obviously doesn't belong to it. It did not have a steering wheel. All of the guts in behind the steering wheel were missing. This is my gauge cluster. They are different between an automatic and a stick. This one is for a stick that I pulled out of a junkyard car and I've been fiddling with it, making it work. Um, the one out of this car is right back there on the back seat. So, no headliner, as you can see. Surprisingly, I still have a dome light. But, um, all the glass is intact, no cracks, which I was very happy about that. Um, glove box was missing. I've got several. I'm trying to basically piece together one good one out of all the ones I have. Uh, same thing with the steering wheel. Yeah. So, you can't really see it on this side, but... See, there's my clutch brake my pedal assembly. i got to install still. Oh, wait. So, there's a small taste of what's going on underneath on the floor. Uh, up front there, ain't too bad. Here's a couple, there's one of my glove box lids. Some uh, sun visors, because they were missing out of this car. Uh, I don't know how well you can see that, but there's a hole right there. There's a couple more right in there. Get some stuff back in here. Um, it's kind of hard to see them right here. It's one of the vents. The vent cover was missing. I got those from the yard. You can see over there, maybe. Yeah, there you go. That one's missing. I got some of them already. I just got to put them in. That floorboard, as you can see, is in a lot worse shape. Uh, the back floor is covered in parts right now, so I'm not even bother trying to show you. But it's missing all kinds of... Uh, somebody patched it before poorly. The dome light or door jam switch, whoop, there it is, obviously is not there. Those were missing when I got the car as well. But, see the door panel, it's in pretty good shape. It's a little saggy, but they're in good shape. See how nice that closes? So again, door panel's in good shape. You can see all my extra pieces and parts I've been collecting. Uh, I figured out, I've had this car since May of 2021. So yeah, it's been a little while I've had this car. But, um... Yeah, like I said in my previous video, red interior, <laughs> black tar. It's basically what I remember my dad having out in the woods, playing in it as a kid. Um, come around here to the driver's side. The only piece of trim that I am missing at the moment, if I recall correctly, there's supposed to be a trim right here. And you can see the hole right there where it mounts in. There's one on either side. I don't have that. That was missing when I got the car. But, um... Yeah, you can see. Door panel. It's in decent shape. Sorry about the shadow. Uh, obviously, the seat that I got is not in good shape. But it's what I could find. <laughs> so, you can see this floor... It is not good. I got a lot of work to do to fix it. Up here, it's rotted through. Up in there, it's not all the way through yet, but it's darn near it. Um, yeah, I got to go through this. <clears throat> excuse me, go through this whole car. That's my vent, which is probably. Oh, hey, it actually works. Check that out. Let in fresh air. So. 
Yep, slowly, slowly, slowly. Had it, oh, almost two years. But yeah, this door panel's a little bit chewy down here, but I love the red. Now obviously, this was painted later. <laughs> That's how you can tell. <laughs> they painted it in the car and didn't bother to remove that. But either way, I think it looks nice. Now, there's a package tray, which I don't think I'm going to be able to show you. Oh, this is one of my rocker panel moldings. The aluminum molding. That's part of the uh, 700 package. Oh, here we go. Now you can see the package tray. Oh, check that out. There's, what, there's that part I was looking for. Okay, cool. Anyway, so here's the package tray, which actually is still intact, which I'm surprised by. Pleasantly so. But yeah. So, obviously I'm going to need tires. i got to do brakes, all that happy stuff, and that's not, you know, on top of all of the uh, body work that I still need to do. But yeah, just thought that I would uh, give you a brief walk around. Oh. If you ever need to know, at least on these cars, where the VIN tag is, right here, whoop, underneath the door latch. I'm not going to show you the VIN, but it's right here. And if I recall correctly, yes, the first digit, at least on these early models, the first digit of the VIN is the year. Of course, they're all in the 60s, so it's going to be a 60, whatever that number is. In this case, two. But, uh, yeah. Uh, so that pretty much is it for the walk around. So, if I come up with anything else, I will let you know. Alright, I decided to go ahead and do the will it run right on the back side of the walk around. So, I'm letting you know there's something else. But, um, now, I've already done all this stuff, but... I want to document it, so, you know, put it on camera. So, anytime you're doing a will it run, I'm sure anybody watching has seen quite a few of them. Uh, you want to check the dipstick, Jimmy. So, check the dipstick. Oh, drippy. Yeah. As you can see, barely see the oil because, well, it's brand new oil. One thing that I am pleasantly surprised by with this engine, I've already cycled the oil through it multiple times and it still looks brand new so that tells me that the passageways ain't all full of junk which again was very surprising considering this was just sitting inside of a, another vehicle it wasn't actually in a place um since i last showed you this i hooked up a coil wire and uh i also Got everything back here. See, here's my coil wire. And I set up a starter button. See? So I'm not arcing a wire. Don't want to do that. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook everything up so I can show you that we have spark. Okay, so, uh oh, that's not good. Really? wonder why it did that that's interesting hmm my new ballast resistor started smoking I'm going to have to investigate that maybe there is a specific way that needs to be hooked up hmm I have to do some investigating hang on alright we're gonna try and make this quick I switched that up. Oop. Oops. No, not black and white. I switched that up. Put the switch the contacts. The points were open when I hooked it up initially, so it was drawing power right away. So I don't know if that had something to do with it or what, but it definitely wasn't happy. So we got a spark plug here. Now I apologize ahead of time. This is going to be noisy because I got you right next to the 
starter and of course it's not going to focus so let's see if we can sh see this spark yeah, I can see it but I don't know if you can plus this thing moved on me which is not helpful mm. maybe there that might be better let's try that there we can see it so yeah you can see I have spark now nearly all of this is junkyard parts I got new parts I've got one spark plug in all the rest of them are the ones that came in this engine the only reason I replaced that one's because I broke it uh, new condenser in the distributor but it's the same points cap rotor all that stuff is what it was when I got the engine coil same thing um, of course I rebuilt the carburetors and cleaned them up uh, kind of rebuilt the starter just made one good one out of two and I had to replace the Bendix on it because it was just shot of course fresh oil and filter fuel pump pretty much that's everything that's well, new slash rebuilt. Otherwise, this is going to be a junkyard, <laughs> re, uh, not rebuild, but uh, will it run? Um, but that's not going to be until a couple of days from now when my dad's here. Because I said we were going to do it with him here. So, until that time. Come on, pause button. Work. All right, the day has arrived. Got my fuel tank set up, inline filter. Uh, learned an interesting thing, easy way to prime the system from a guy named Dave Motorhead. You can find him online too. Is loosen up this bolt here, which is what holds the fuel pump in. And what you can do is you can literally push this up and down and pump the fuel <laughs> right out of the tank into the carbs so I already did that and came across my first uh, I don't know issue whatever you want to call it both of the floats <laughs> were sticking open so I had to do the old taparoo on the uh, body here to make them stop sticking because both of my I don't know what you call the little thing it's down inside the Venturi but they were both dripping so this thing is already flooded but um, hopefully I got that under control for now um, also this fitting was leaking it appears as though it's still seeping so I'm going to see if I can get that a little bit tighter this one you can see is just a little damp so later uh, after I get this thing running, I'm going to have to take these lines back off and tighten that up. Maybe see if I can find some fuel resistant thread tape to put on it. I know I don't have any. But um, I also put a cargo strap down here around the bottom of the table. This angle iron here is holding the engine up off of the oil pan because it's sitting up here on the mount and in the back it's sitting on the bell housing so I strapped it down the bottom of the bell housing is nice and flat so it gives it a nice spot to hold it in place because I have no idea what this engine is going to try to do as far as movement when I do get it running now I'm not going to be hooking up the idler the fan or generator because all I want to do is see if this thing will run but like I said I've already got it flooded out so <laughs> it might take a few goes to get it to crank over but once my dad gets here we will commence the attempt okay so while we're waiting on my dad um, wanted to get things set up give myself a little more room over here so I could come down this side of the engine if I need to but hopefully I don't um, expectations I do expect it to run I'm not going to give any expectation on how well it'll run. 
Uh, I also expect it to smoke terribly and leak oil. I have no idea what's going to blow out of the exhaust because I don't know what's in the combustion chambers. Because I don't have one of those nifty uh, bore scopes that I can look down in and figure it out. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to have some stuff flying out of the exhaust which hopefully you might catch when I set up and actually get ready to crank it. So yeah, hopefully next image you see will be from a slightly further away distance. I don't know <laughs> how good the, the sun's coming out and there's going to be background noise, but it's what happens when you live on a busy road. All right, time's come. Dad's here. Say hi. Hi. So I'm going to get you set up over here. Get my uh, tripod going on. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, we'll see what we can come up with here. Uh, sorry for the noise because I don't know how loud there's no exhaust on this thing except for the manifold so we'll have to see how it works out so give me a sec here to set you up and that's pretty good let's zoom in a little bit there we go now I gotta move around to the front and hook everything up Thank you. Yeah, I can go that way. Actually, that side would be better. Where can reach everything. All right. So I hook up my, uh, you know, battery terminals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they do that on Hamilton Farms. What's that? Hamilton Farms do that too. Oh, yeah? They use the vice grips. Oh, yeah, we got spark. Stay on there. I'm excited and I'm also a little anxious at the same time because I don't know what's going to happen. Alright, so that should be all I need. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Told you it was flooded. Yeah. All that fuel spitting out of it. Yeah. Oh, this is not good. No backfires today, please. smoky in here.
from this angle. had to get reseated the thing. Oh yeah. Can't let off the gas yet. So uh, I'm sure they're all fuel fouled right now. Yep. in your view. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it won't focus. I found out this camera doesn't focus. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of annoyed by that, but yeah, you see how black that is, and you can kind of see it's wet. Yeah, these were clean before we started, so yeah, I'm going to take all these out, clean them up, and then put them back in, and then we'll try again. All right, one more time. This time all the plugs are clean, so we hook everything back up and see if we can get it to run and maybe idle on its own. That'd be nice. Yeah, that's 
structure. Back of room to the front. Alright, let's see what happens. <coughs> watching this thing going like this. Oh. It was vibrating violently. And it's leaking all over the place, which means it's getting way too much fuel into it. So I don't know. Does that have a setting on the top of that? No, there is no way to set it. It's just put it in place. There's a little uh, hole that the uh, set, set pin goes right. into. And like I said, it's been I just took notice it is PM fuel. Because there's a nice puddle over here laying. Man, that created all kinds of leaks. Look at that. Good thing I'm going to be replacing fuel lines. But I do need to figure out what's going on with this fuel pump. Why is it so tight? I need a rag. Rag. Uh, loosen up the jam nut. That was really loud. Oh, the jam that is loose. Oh, I wonder if that's what happened. I wonder if the thing backed itself out. Oh, it's all wet all the way around. Right. Both sides. I don't know, like I said, what just happened. That's why everything got so wet. I already knew this one was seeping, but right. as much as that thing was moving around, like I said, I don't know. I'm going to have to pull this pump apart at some point. 
But we need to take away this thing's crime. All right. <laughs> what a mess. But it runs. Still got a lot of issues to figure out. But at least that is figured out. So, coming your way, blocking the camera. Look out. Oh, that zoomed way in. No, 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 no. Go back out. All right. Let me show you what I'm talking about over here. It's going to be hard to see without being able to actually focus. But I just backed this out. Yep, you can see it drip. See, my fingers all wet now. So for some reason, this thing is pumping way too much gas, which is not a good thing. Like I said, something I'm going to have to figure out. But uh, yeah, are we still dripping in here? Mm, doesn't look like it. Well, that's good. At least that part got figured out. How about this side? Oh. Well, one of the choke things is working. <laughs> See how this is most of the way open? Yeah. Actually, they both probably are because this side wasn't firing nearly as good as this side. This side probably got warmer, which would be why the choke is opening up because it all runs on the heat of the head. That's why this one's not open as far. Oh yeah, there's your will it run. Yes, it will. <laughs> so, till next time, if, again, you feel the urge, like, subscribe, but whether you do or not is entirely up to you. So, thanks for watching, and until next time, have a good one. Just as an aside, uh, I was talking to my dad after we got done running the engine, and that was the first time in, he said since the 80s, since he has been right next to a Corvair engine running. So it was a very nostalgic thing for him, which of course is why I wanted him there.